Morning. This is a photo of uh, Seven Islands Pond, uh, a small lake near me. Hope you can see that. There's, there's an island at the back and one to the right and some foreground in the bottom right hand corner. There are several layers in this and I, I'll try to get the background in first and let it dry and then go into the foreground or the middle distance island and superimpose it on, the, on a misty background. If anybody has any questions about these videos, please uh, please ask. And if you've got suggestions how I can improve the actual video, that would be of great help too. Now, I'm going to wet the paper first with the with the usual two inch hake. I've put the camera quite close to the to the paper in the hope that it will give a better performance and if I can remember to keep my head out of the way. I've done no preliminary drawing and I'm using the usual palette of, of um, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber and Payne's grey. I don't clean the palette because a lot of these greys here end up on the painting as sort of indistinct but, but necessary greys. So I'll put in the raw sienna sky on the wet paper. I started one of these on the back of this one earlier but I hadn't really thought it out. So I'll do that and it was quite a cloudy day when I took this photograph in December before Christmas. So I'm going to put some light grey clouds in, mixing ultramarine and a bit of Payne's grey and I'll just stroke it, stroke it in like that and into the reflection area. That, that will do, that will do. Right, while that's still damp and soaking in, I'll put in the background trees, uh, the horizon will be, be along there. So we get those in using those colours, the grey, a bit of raw sienna and the blue. It was a freezing cold day when I took it. I think I've done this before but it won't hurt to do it again. Right, okay, so we'll, we'll just put a background of trees in with different colours, well modifying the colours as we go. Underneath this there's a a grassy bank that goes right across the picture. A bit more blue. Remembering that blues and greys recede into the distance and give a nice, nice effect. And as the paper dries, you can use stronger colours, dry brush, just to make it interesting. So just bit of raw sienna in there in the mix to show probably some late autumn foliage. I'm going to take it right across. I'm going to cover up this side but there is an island here and there's a big island coming across there. All right, just that'll do. Just bring that up there because this is from the a nearer island from the background. Right, while well that's uh, settling down, I'm going to, across here, put this grassy bank and I'm just going to touch. I've mixed a bit of lemon yellow with raw sienna, I'm just varying it. This area is, um, has suffered a bit from landfill. Where they've created a great, great hill to the side of this. It used to be dead flat and it was a lovely area for painting distant trees and for going all the stuff that we want to learn to paint. Right, okay, that'll do. I'm going to dry that now. Because I want to put something under here. Okay, 
Now you can see the paper's expanded with the wet wetness. So I'll just re I'll stretch it and reclip it the best I can. This is suffering a bit from the painting the other side, which is still probably a bit damp, but never mind. We've got to be prepared to have casualties in this. Right, okay. Now under here we've got this this bank showing showing autumny leaves, browns, umbers. But I want a fairly dry brush for that. So I'm going to mix mix some burnt umber with a bit of ultramarine. It's a bit wet. I always have the, a, a wad of rag, folded rag, handy just to take off excess moisture. So just come across. This is an island. It's what called seven islands. There are seven islands. And just add bits of lighter raw sienna. Just using that point part of the brush, just a tiny bit, just to, to dry brush o over that. I'm holding my breath when I do this. I don't want any accidents. Now I can mix in a bit of a bit of grey, a bit of Payne's grey for the bank area. It's getting a variety of colour and textures in to make it interesting. We've already got the the bank, and now because it's a warm colour, it's throwing the background back even further. Although in actual fact, we're probably only looking over about a quarter of a mile at the most. But we're making a picture. Here, look, giving an impression of twigs and stuff. Try and keep my horizon on that straight, or oh, at least power. Um, horizontal, so just add some bits to it. Right, and with a plastic card near the corner of one, you can just etch in some, some twiggy bits. We're going to do the reflections later, you can drag that into the, into the reflection, these white bits. Just a bit of texture, just a bit of bit of interest. Now I'll do one over here, which is pretty similar but it but it's got some bigger trees on it. So we'll just using a warmish mix of burnt umber, bit of Payne's grey, a bit of palette grey really. So we'll uh, we'll just just add some stuff on there. I'm going to take some some artistic license with this. That might be a touch too dry. I'll be too wet, sorry. All right, just listening onto the radio, and there's been a, a, a or something on the M25, a major motorway going round all the way around London, Seven Oaks. And I've got to go around there next week to do a demonstration for an art group in Western. Looking forward to that. I hope some of them are looking at these dem demos. Right now, I'm going to sweep in a bit of a bank around here. So we're just do some of this, like that. Bit of light red, mix in with a bit of ultramarine. All right, okay. Put some, want to put some texture in this area here, just reeds and stuff. Leaving quite a bit unpainted. Add some raw sienna into the mix. Some darks here and there. Some pebbles. Don't want really to use the. I've just 
put in some Payne's Grey in each, but I don't think it, it helps. It's a good mixer, but I wouldn't use it on its own. I can help it. Just try to texture this bank a little bit with a credit card or a bit of a, whatever card you've got. Just stroke in some pebbles. To do this, you need the paint fairly dark, otherwise the lights won't show as you scrape scrape them off. Just to give a bit of interest in the foreground here. The grasses. There wasn't much colour on the day. So the warmest really are these colours here in the middle distance. But I'm going to put in some more trees in here. Now this bank, there was some stuff on that on that bank. I've got to show the edge of that as it goes into the water. So we'll just use a, a greeny colour, greeny blue. I don't want this warm. So I'll just show something along there. Okay, that that'll do there. Right, okay. So I'm going to put in some some trees coming up here and then I'll texture over them to give an impression or try to give an impression of there being lots of twigs we haven't actually painted. So I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine. Always gives a good good warm grey for trees. So we'll have all this coming out of here. Not going right off the top of the paper. So lots of lots of fine branches going up there, but I don't want to put them too th too thick at the end. And I, I've made the the hake into a knife edge, if you can see that. Okay, on my palette, I just got about the right amount of moisture in there, but it is starting to split a little bit. That will persevere. more grey on the brush. We do a lot of fine work with this brush. I'm not a great lover of the rigger when I can do it with this. Right, and some of this came across here. When I put the, the dry brush twigs in, you'll see how I can get the shape of the, the foliage. I anchor that into the, into the landscape. I just put some darks in here to the shadow. There's a browny greys. I can flick a few bits out of it with your fingernail or card. If you bite your nails, you'll have to use your card. Right, okay, and some coming coming across here, going off the painting. Look at that, hits and misses. Don't, whatever you do, draw with it. Don't drag it, just touch. Touch bits of the brush. Uh -huh. Right, okay. Now in here, at the back, there are some, some other trees in here, so we'll just show them in there. Same sort of colour. I'm taking it over just enough so I can do a reflection in the water when I do it. Right, okay, let's just get some more branches. Well, that'll do. Uh, probably there's a tree in there, but oh yeah, I'll do it. I'll take the grey down a little bit so that it's not too too strong, and I'll just put some in the background here. All right, I'll stroke over that in a minute. Uh, 
And if I put a couple of, I'll invent a couple here just to give a bit of interest on this side to balance. So put that as if it's coming on the bank low down from behind. You can get carried away and overdo this, put too many trees in and spoil the effect. A little goes a long way. Right, okay. I'll just put some more, just some more in here. Right. Right, okay. Now, the brush is fairly dry now, and with the burnt umber, a bit of grey, a bit of blue, what a really dry brush. And with this part of the brush, I'm just going to stroke and I'm going to establish the shape of it. Oops. And remember that some branches are at the back, so if I put a bit of blue in the mix, it might give an impression that there are some there are some trees or the branches are going away from the, the, the trees that they're actually stuck onto. It didn't quite work there. But we'll try on the background trees. I'll use blue, a blue mix, but fairly dry brush again. Well, quite a dry brush. So I want this to lay back in the landscape. Same here, slightly warmer. I'm not using the tip of the brush, just the just the edge, just the, sorry, just the belly of it. Okay. Right, so I'm going to give that a dry now. I'm going to put that back on there, and I'm going to do the reflections. But I want the paper to be very dry. And so remember that, don't try and do this over damp paper because you'll end up with cauliflowers. <coughs> so, hair dryer. I'll put a bit of texturing in here before we finish. Right, clean water. Oh, that's terrible, I didn't clean the brush enough. Right, bring it right down onto the paint below. Now, when well, it's like that, we can, do, we can repeat those colours now on the island into the reflection. I, bit harder on the base. What's there? And a bit of, bit of blue, bluey grey, very weak in there, and a bit stronger there. Right, okay. That's bleeding down now into the uh, into the pond, so I'll just add. Oops, wrong brush. So I'll just add some heavier reflections for the for the trunks. You, I'm using ultramarine and burnt amber, and quite a little bit thick, just so that it registers. If you put the same consistency of paint on the reflection as the the, the reflection itself, it'll just bleed into nothing. Uh, so you need to paint heavier paint. It will, it will no. just give a, an approximate. You don't, you won't get, get it dead right. But there's some over here. more blue in there, I think. Right. Now a bit of, bit of uh, grey in here. Hopefully that will just soak in a bit. Right, just 
just be click that. Oh, not too too bad. Just got a lot of water accumulating at the bottom here. Just wipe that off. Right. Now. Wipe off. Right, I'm going to strengthen these up a little bit. They're a bit... Uh, this tree actually was further back, but <coughs> I've taken a bit of a liberty with it and brought it forward. But it's, it's uh, not very... Dis it was not distinguishable from the ones behind, really, so I'm going to just thicken them up a bit. a few bits just to bring it forward if I can. Right, I said I was going to do some some bit of texturing in here. Scrape in there now. Right now, with a with a with a hake, with clean, very clean water. Or anyway, I, I've, I'm just squeezing out the water into the into the cloth now. The hake is what we describe describe as being thirsty. I'm just going to see if I can lift out some of this paint. I'm trying to miss the, the camera which is by the side of me. But I wouldn't say that was particularly good, but it gives an idea of something hitting the water or a fish underneath. So I think I'll, I'll sign that now. Put in a couple of birds. I could even put a couple of figures in there, but I won't. Oops. Probably have done that one. But just a bit big. I'll find the costume out. Good example here of when you're in a hole, stop digging. Right, signature. Probably put a few grasses just to finish with coming up here. Just to add a bit of a few grasses, just a bit of interest in the foreground. But when you're looking at a landscape, you're looking there, you're not looking at your feet. So 
any advice there is do the foreground as quickly as you can. I think that's about all I can do with that. I'll show you my version. You look at the picture and there we go. I'll just put that in a mount and we can see. Gives a better idea of what the picture would look like if, it, if, if it, somebody actually bought it and put it in a frame. Right, hold on, I won't be a moment. Right, okay. Um, there we are. Always looks better in a mount. So if I bring that closer, you can see in a bit of detail what I've actually done. Got the background in, and by strengthening those foreground trees, it throws the other ones behind it back into the distance. So I hope I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.